what is your inspirations for engagement within education? So, so my vision of the world is when enthusiastic students are taught by passionate teachers in mm. joyful schools. Mm. Now, the vision is clear to me, mm -hmm. but bringing about that vision is a little tricky mm -hmm. because, because that's the opposite of what happens right now. Um, and so that's what I've been, I've had that vision for decades. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been, you know, trying to figure out how, how do I even get my mind around how these different things work? How does the system work? Um, and, and so that's, that's where like, yes, and that vision can be accomplished if we start to tune into exactly what it is that brings a human alive. Like, what is it that gives them the enthusiasm? What is it that, that enables a teacher to be passionate such that when they come together, joy is the result, is the, is the, the norm in that school. And, and there are examples of that. I've seen it. And so that's where I, psychology to me was the key, is to say, okay, we actually can, we have a science that looks at human beings and says, wow, they're amazing. <laughs> and it mm. doesn't say you have to dissect a human in order to f understand them. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. <laughs> mm. um, we now can can think about it in more broad terms we have you know uh there's there's the the development of positive psychology for instance over the last 25 mm -hmm. years or so um now it has deeper roots but that's when it actually got a name and actually became a thing and there's limitations to it for sure um there's controversies in the field as there is in any science um it's not perfect but it is producing some really interesting stuff that's validating a lot of what mm. the spiritual practices have been touting for a long time. Spencing, um, you, yeah. know, you can look across different realms and say, okay, you know, mindfulness in some ways was drawn from Eastern traditions. Mm -hmm. um, but there's forms of meditative practice and, and, and contemplativeness across all of the spiritual mm. traditions. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of absurd to say it's got a specific lineage and that's all it's going to be it is mm -hmm. something that's human in fact yeah um so so we're actually learning a lot the science as the science of psychology in particular matures it starts to look at a broader perspective and start to encompass like for instance uh even my view of god is well it's a placeholder if if i say you know if you look at how number systems work you know before we had zero so so like greek number numerals don't have a zero mm. yeah. that makes a lot of calculations fiendishly difficult yeah. It's not impossible. Mm -hmm. So having a placeholder for an absence is really important. Mm. To me, God, as a term, is just me acknowledging I have no idea. There's mm -hmm. some causal... Now, now, this is the thing. This is why I'm, it's not an atheistic point of view. Because I'm, I, I'm saying there's a causal... There's something causal in that mm -hmm. absence you know, that I don't understand. It causes me to do things, causes things in my world. It has causal effects but I don't understand it. So I'll call it God. I can be thankful for that. I can curse mm. that, but it's still looking at it in this larger perspective. And to me, that's just a consequence of our psychology. It's like, we can't know everything. And so you have to have a placeholder and it's very useful to have a placeholder say, is every time I invoke the term God, you can interpret that as, oh, there's some causal things about going on that you don't mm -hmm. understand. Okay, great. But let's be clear about that and humble about what that means. To say that we know God's will, well, if God is the absence of knowledge of what's, you know, like, that's, that's an interesting metaphor, and we could debate mm. whether or not that's an appropriate metaphor for whatever it is the topic we're discussing. But that's where it's really interesting, is we can take that spiritual view. It's not, it's not traditional theism in the sense that we're going to assign it properties and, and assume mm. we know something. We don't. But yes, we're also not going to deny exploration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not yeah. going to deny that there is something there. There's something important there. I mm. may not understand it now. It also doesn't preclude me from coming to know mm. what it is. You know, I I can be ignorant of my biology, but when I you know get, <laughs> I had a kidney stone last year. Man, that's horrible. Mm. But man, I was really great to be able to have somebody who could go in, use technology, really figure out what's going on with me, and mm. and in a short time, you know, basically relieve tremendous suffering uh, that I was having at that moment. Um, but then also, like, go beyond that. Like, okay, I didn't know what kidney stones were. I didn't, you know, I had kidneys. I, well, 
now I know a lot more about my kidneys than I did before. Mm. So it's not that I can't come to know. To me, it was it was I was cursed with kidney stones. You know, God cursed me mm. with them. However, now I've understood a lot more about them, and I've taken steps in my life to, you know, eat eat less meat. Uh, I, I, that, that was about the only major thing that was on the typical symptomology thing. It's like, mm. oh, okay, you know, less drink. Well, I don't drink much, so that's not a thing. So, mm. you know, and you mm. go down the list, like, okay, well, I can do that. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I changed my life a little bit, and, and so far so good. <laughs> Knocking them away. Yeah. Uh, but to me, if I just, if I, you know, thank God for medical intervention in my life that was tremendously helpful, that's no different than cursing God for giving me the thing that enabled me to do that. Uh, you know, like, like I can, I recognize that there's, there's things about the way that medical system works. I'll never understand the MRI machine that gave me the image, or it wasn't MRI, it was something else. Whatever mm. scan I got, you know, I'll, mm. I have no interest in that. <laughs> mm. I don't need to understand it. And I can thank God for it, though, um, mm. and recognize that what I'm acknowledging is I'm ignorant of something over there. So, mm -hmm. so psychology to me is completely compa you know, helps me understand that, that there's a way that we can use, spirituality is just tapping into something bigger than me. And that's exactly what psychology says is important. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it, it, there's a, one, of the, one of the interventions that is so clearly effective from positive psychology, besides mindfulness, is gratitude. Mm -hmm. Just being grateful for something in your world, in your life. Just having a regular practice of looking beyond yourself and say, what am I thankful for? That happens to be one of the, a really powerful way to tune in, to be humble and grateful. And, you know, uh, and, and that's, that's also taught in every religious tradition, every spiritual tradition. That's you know? good. Mm. Uh, so, so it, 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 to me, it, it all does come together, um, and and I am perfectly comfortable having the science conversation because I am a scientist, um, and recognize that spirituality is a part of the whole thing, mm. and 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 they are not incompatible. Um, it's just mm. a matter of, like the the blind men and the elephant is uh, one of the po great poems that I. Uh, put in my book, and it's you know the six blind men going up to the elephant, and and the way the the poem is wrote, written in 1876 or something like that, um, mm -hmm. is you know they're it, it, oft in theologic wars they they uh, talk basically talk about things they've never seen, which is mm -hmm. you know the blind men and the elephant, um, and they mm -hmm. each come to it and and feel a different part of it and describe it in a different way. Well, the, the conceit of that poem that I find interesting is the the author of the poem presumes that we know the essence of an elephant. We know everything there is to know about an elephant merely by looking at it. Mm. That's completely absurd. We are no yeah. better than those blind men in terms of our knowledge <laughs> of an elephant. Yeah. So it, yeah. It, it's, it's when we realize that and go, oh, wait a minute. Mm. They're presuming we know everything about the elephant, <laughs> the essence of the because elephant. Because I can like, see it from the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And oh. so, so hu hu the humility mm. we need to bring to the conversation is, and in fact, I ran into that poem in the context of reflections on science before I f realized it was about religion. Mm. Um, mm. And so it's, it's, it's fascinating cause, because both are efforts to grasp reality and mm, realizing that we'll never be, we're, we're, we're all continuously blind uh, and that will never change. And so it's a matter of, more important than the elephant, you know, assuming we're superior to the blind men for our grasp of the elephant is to say, well, then how do we have a conversation amongst those blind men and ourselves and, and, and in a way that brings us to the humility to realize we don't understand elephants. Mm. We can understand a lot about them. We can, you know, people can study their biology and their social systems and their and amazing things about them and get to know them and train them and work with them and observe them in the wild and do all kinds of things. And we'll still be ignorant. Never know. You'll never know. The whole truth. Right. So. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing yourself here so abundantly and openly. And like I said before, I think we've only just scratched the surface um, in terms of, yeah, really how deep these rabbit holes go. But the key thing um, 
is yeah, just restoring our engagement mm-hmm. with education. Mm-hmm. I think it is potentially one of the most noble causes out there. So I just, you know, and like you said, you've dedicated decades to this work, potentially lifetimes. So taking a moment to thank you for today's conversation, but honestly, just thank you for your life's work really is what I would probably like to say. Um, thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah. And for those that want to check out more, um, holisticequity.org is definitely a great place to start, would you say? Or yes, what absolutely. would you say? That's the best yeah. best place to start. You, I've got tons of videos there. Um, and, and uh, you know, you'll notice the site doesn't have a, doesn't take a spiritual perspective um, mm. because that's basically a marketing tool, as I said, you know. I'm